the Kimeki to Nine is mainly the story of the very wholesome teenage vampire, Danse Eto, who just wants to be a normal girl and be free to love her classmate, Shun Makabe. In this world, all sorts of monsters or demons exist and live in the demon world, with the exception of Ranza's family, who live in the human world. Her parents are a self-hired vampire and a hot-tempered werewolf. And while the anime doesn't get to show this, I'll tell you that her little brother Rinse is also a werewolf and a very good boy. Unlike other monsters, Danse seems like a very normal girl, except that she can transform into anything she bites. And I really mean anything. If she bites someone from the demon world, she also gets their powers. The downside is that she can only go back to her normal self by sneezing, which is often inconvenient and makes transforming into inanimate objects an extremely bad idea. If this show took itself more seriously, Danza turning into food or spending maybe hours as a baseball, unable to move at will or get help because no one can hear her, will be terrifying beyond comprehension. On the romance side of things, which is a huge part of the story, Ran says supposedly has a rival called Yoko, who's also her classmate and the daughter of a Yakuza. But honestly, this is not really a love triangle as much as it is a countdown until Makabe starts showing that he likes Ran's back. Yoko is high spirit and tragically clueless about the ways in which she is intrusive and annoying. The fact that she doesn't really have a chance with Makabe doesn't stop Ranze from fighting with her because Ranze herself doesn't know how Makabe feels. Meanwhile, Makabe has a bad boy, long wolf sort of image, according to himself. And although he can be harsh, he's actually a pretty nice guy who's very shy. He's also very into boxing. Danse as a protagonist is so goofy and so endearing to watch. When she's happy, my heart melts. <laughs> she's also courageous when need. She has no problem letting her feelings be known and will go against the demon king himself for what she loves. I say this story mostly follows Ranse because the manga can actually be divided into three parts. The first one being Ranse's, while the second follows her little brother Rinse, and the third follows Ranse's daughter, who's pretty much a magical girl. Curiously enough, mangaka Koikeno will go on to co create and do the manga for the 1995 magical girl series Nurse Angel Ririka SOS, just a year after ending Takimeki Junai. But anyway, Ranse's part is the longest and most popular, and honestly the best one, and the anime focuses entirely on the earliest bits of her story. The anime air for less than a year as a very 80s lapstick rom-com, while the manga will go on for around a decade, which means it never really got the chance to get to the real meat of the story. This also means that the show had to create its own drama, like having Makabe discover Ranse's secret, in a way that's comparable to the 80s pure magical girls that came later, where the girls are discovered by their love interests while they transform. And speaking of those shows, both Persia and Yoko are boys by Mina Tominaga, while Makabe and all the crushes in the 80s period magical girl shows are boys by Yu Mitsushima, which means he spent half the 80s boys in shoujo heartthrobs. <laughs> Demon War has rules against falling for humans, for frankly bull reasons imposed by a tyrant, which makes Ranz's love for Makabe forbidden. Except our beloved Makabe is not average dude. For the record, there's a Last Demon Prince storyline that really gets going after Ranze confesses her secret to Makabe in the manga, while in the anime, it's mostly used to get him into the demon world for space and Indiana Jones-like shenanigans. The anime never shows Ranze and Makabe kissing either, which they do in the manga around this stage, although they do get romantic and dramatic hugs which I can also appreciate. It's worth noting that the anime does expand on the mentioned rule when the king reveals that he dislikes humans because they're violent and kill each other senselessly, just as he himself is about to kill senselessly, which Ranz's parents point out as prejudice that's no different from the prejudice and the discrimination that exists in the human world. Family plays a big part in this series, and while Rance's parents don't exactly want to reveal against authority, when it comes down to it, they will take Rance's side. 
because there is no bigger power than the power of love. One of my absolute favorite things about the show is how the world and the atmosphere are designed. I have the impression that it feels retro even for 1980s standards because the flat, highly stylish backgrounds reminds me of certain cartoons from the 50s and 60s. There's a way it uses green and purple, which can be the colors of death, decay, and in purple's case, the otherworldly. There's also the abundance of pink and black with white for contrast. At night, houses are usually green and purple, and when we don't have the darkness of night, the sky is usually either green or pink depending on the time of the day. Pink in particular can consume the entire atmosphere, often with purple. This gives the show a very distant mood. It has the pastels and sparkles we can expect from older shoujo, while truly feeling like a world where a monster family are the protagonists. The opening and the ending are very charming as well, with the opening capturing the feelings of a girl falling in love, while the ending shows girls in love as a chanting witches. In the context of airing from 1982 to 1983, there's a beloved classic that came out around this time. You bet it is reference. It also references Rocky down to its most iconic training scene, which also had its third installment coming out around this time. In an episode where Makabe accepts the challenge of fighting an American champion called Rocky, although he seems more like the Apollo in this situation. <laughs> The show does have its stumbles and its sheer things that are questionable or haven't aged well. The gays being weird jokes in a show that values love is one of them. The design of Joko Zat is another one. Gangsters being portrayed as caricatures is also a thing in Stop Hibari-kun, which had an anime in 1983. So I do wonder how common that was for the humor of the time. Things like Ranse wearing nothing but a clock in the ending as a sign of maturity is not really appropriate and doesn't even fit her character. Though it's fair to mention that the show doesn't end without everyone participating, even Rocky. <laughs> And it's generally a pretty wholesome show. It can also be pretty self-aware, and while it's mostly comedy, it's good at invoking horror when it wants to. <laughs> and it does have its share of heartfelt moments and episodes that explores things like self-acceptance, second chances, or all the good that's in a character's heart, and so on. When it's just being funny, it can combine the cute and the scary in very entertaining ways. It's a charming show, truly. Super love.